we're bringing this back. This is something that these kids want and they love it. Look at how they were today. They're so excited to buy it. Just, you just gotta give it to them and give it to them in an interesting way. And they're just like hot to trot for it. Another way of teaching grammar is through sentence diagramming. This is just for the purpose of making him conscious of the various parts of a sentence, sort of the, uh, an anatomy lesson of, of the English sentence. I was teaching a class in short fiction, and I cannot remember the story, but it has a very interesting first line, sort of like that there is a truth universally acknowledged first line. And I said, you know, it's too bad that you guys, they burned all the diagramming books, because if you guys knew how to diagram sentences, I could really show you why this sentence is so interesting. And so two students came up to me after class and said, we really want to learn this thing. We've heard about this thing. You know, why don't you teach a class in it? And I said, nobody wants to take a class like that. But if you can each find three friends, because you have to have six students to make a class here, um, then I'll, I'll, I'll teach the six of you. The class attracted over 30 students. My name is Kitty Flory. I'm the author of a book about diagramming sentences called Sister Bernadette's Barking Dog. And the subtitle is The quirky history and lost art of diagramming sentences. The book started with a little essay that I wrote, just a sort of nostalgic, fun essay about growing up in the 50s with this wacky system. I don't know how many emails I got about this book, and I was interviewed all over the place. People went crazy over this idea. So many people had never heard of it. It was eye-opening for a lot of people. This sounds really cool. In the mid-1800s, an English professor at a boys' academy in upstate New York wrote a book called A Practical Grammar, in which words, phrases, and sentences are classified according to their offices and their various relations to one another. It classified words in a sentence by putting them into these um, ovals and then connecting the ovals so that it looked like a fleet of, um, of airships. Or what it really looks like to me are those, um, those balloon animals that they make it at carnivals and stuff for little kids all twisted together. They're, it's really kind of crazy looking. It was in use for maybe 30 years until it was improved upon. Two professors from Brooklyn, Reed and Kellogg, devised a better way to show a picture of language. The book came out in 1877. It went through a million different editions. And the, the whole concept, exactly the way that they devised it, was still being used in schools when I was in sixth grade, and is still being used occasionally here and there in enlightened school districts today. I remember it as being fun, but this is not a memory that is shared by my entire class. So there were people who hated it. Miss Michelle taught us to diagram sentences in ninth grade. I used to hate it. Now I bought a book on diagramming because I think it's, it's a very clear way to define the function of words in a sentence. You can see them, it's diagrammed. And it really did help me think about sentences in a different way, like to recognize a prepositional phrase and identify the subject. It was a very useful exercise. As I taught these parts of speech, I was also diagramming. And it got to a point where they really, most of them, not all of them, liked diagramming. It made sense. And also it was fun. That was the most valuable thing I learned in all of my education uh, up through the PhD level. I mean, as one student said, that she says it's like taking a class in Scrabble. You know, it's, it's a game to them. I love diagramming sentences as a child, but I was the sort of person who loved diagramming sentences. I think because I'm a visual person, because of the final product of what you get with a diagram, that's actually my probably more of my interest, discovering what that sentence is going to look like, and then the challenge of you can't get away from it. You have to chew on every single word in its job, and there's no playing with that. So to me, that's quite punk rock. Like To me, that's like, that is so hard, and that is so rocking. Diagramming is a way of focusing in really deeply on the language that we take for granted. I think that's probably something that's good for children to do because their lives are very fast and everything is geared toward a test. It's geared towards just getting it done. There's a lot to accomplish in the school day. It really makes you slow down and look at writing, look at what you're writing, look at a sentence and how it's put together and try to understand it. 